Hello, everybody, and hello to you, uh, Roman Reigns. Thank you for joining us. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So I had a big intro planned for you. Former professional football player, wrestling star, philanthropist, actor. You, you do commercials. There, there's so much that you're doing. It was overwhelming for me. So I'll just ask you, what do you think of what is Roman Reigns as an entertainment property? How do you describe yourself uh, right now in your career? Well, I guess um, the the best way to describe me is the universal champion. Uh, you know, the, the the top guy of WWE, the face of WWE, um, the tribal chief, the head of the table. You know, um, and the monikers can continue to go on and on. Um, but I'd like to think that WWE, you know, as a global multimedia platform, it does so much to prepare us and and kind of create like a Swiss Army knife of entertainment. You know, we're 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 challenged to tap into so many different um, facets of you know performing arts and, and live performance that you're really tested and you have to really be able to kind of find your way or you're gonna you're gonna sink instead of swimming in, in this large you know deep end of of the WWE. So um, hey, it's something that we're continually tested with, uh, especially in these times now. Um, and and hopefully you know as not only as a performer and as a as a man, but you know, just a, as a human being in general, just can always trying to progress and get better in life. And you have a big, pretty big match, obviously coming up at the end of the week uh, in SummerSlam out out in Las Vegas. Um, give me a sense of what I mean, how, how your preparation's going, what, what what that's been like for you. Uh, for me, you know, I just kind of try to stick to my gun, stick to my process. Um, you know, it, it's. Uh, it's a it's a huge event. This is this SummerSlam is a WrestleMania level um, event. You know, we're, it's a stadium show. We're going to be in Allegiant Stadium uh, in Las Vegas. Um, it's it's going to be a lot of people, it, and as it should be when when you're wrestling somebody of the star power and the magnitude of a John Cena. You know, with the career he's had and, and where he's put himself uh, within. You know the. Uh, the, uh, the the movie scene and everything and the summer that he's having it's uh it's a huge matchup it's a huge spotlight with a huge platform to uh, broadcast it so i'm excited well, i've obviously spoken to a lot of team owners and, and wwe is is no different this has been a tough year financially for a lot of sports entities not having fans having to do a lot of things remotely we are hopefully knock on wood coming out of that i'm curious for you as a as, as the face of WEWD, how much you've thought about kind of what that was like financially and it's obviously, obviously affected you as well and what it means to kind of be back in front of uh, sold out crowds moving forward. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's one of those things that you have to be aware of. Um, do you want to let it consume you and, and let it be the only thing that drives you? Um, you know, you try not to. Um, but I think you certainly have to be aware of where we are, you know, financially and, and what we're trying to do as a, as a business and a product. Um, and like every business that's, uh, you know, gone through this pandemic along with us, we've had to make adjustments. Uh, we, we've had to be resilient. We've had to uh, change it up a little bit um, and obviously um, stick to the protocol and, and put health and, and life first. But at the same time, we want to be able to contribute to this life and we want to be able to do what we do. And that's entertain, and that's uh, put smiles on faces, uh, especially in a tough time like, you know, uh, a pandemic going through this COVID-19 process and, and trying to find and navigate a, uh, a new normal for, for all of us. Let's go back to the way beginning of your career. You come from a, a, a wrestling family with obviously a lot of history. Uh, within wrestling, um, but wrestling was not the original sport that you were excelling in. Um, you went to college football, you played at Georgia Tech, um, spent some time in the NFL, then up in up in Canada in the CFL. Um, I'm curious, you're talking about kind of the entertainment aspects of what you do right now. How different do you feel like the athletic pursuit is that you're doing right now is from kind of the football pursuit that you had a, a decade and a half ago? Well, I... It's, I guess the, the main part is just, it's a different perspective now. You know, I think with what I do now and it just being heavily identified as, as entertainment and, and the performance, um, it, there's no, you know, um, there's no hiding that. And I think with sports, 
back in you know not to sound like the old guy but back in my day um, <laughs> you know what i mean it, it was still heavily sports centric you know what i mean it, the love of the game it was all a game you know and it was all about that hyper focus on the production within the game on the field um but i i think sports all of it you know from from fighting all the way to stick and ball sports um, it's as much entertainment as anything else in this world. And, and I think we're seeing that even more so. You know, you see it. Uh, Conor McGregor's a, a great example. Not, yes, he is, he's had a great career. Um, but is he in the prime of it now uh, within the octagon with his skill level and, and how he's matching up against the competition? Maybe not. But he's still in high demand because he's an entertainer. He's a showman. Uh, and there's a great demand for that, right? Um and then even all the way to a college football now with um, with them being able to capitalize and, and make some money and, and, and do things like that, um, I think it's really starting to showcase the process of just how profitable um, something like football, college football, all the way to the NFL is and, and that, you know, the role that these athletes play within that process is, is critical. I wanted to ask you about that exact thing, actually. You've been in a lot of video game, WWE 2K video games. I think the first video game you were in was the EA Sports college football video game uh, way back yeah, in 2005. It's, way, yeah. it's something you were obviously not compensated for. What do you think about kind of this, this new era of college athlete rights? Is that, uh, I'm sure it's something you wish you had back then, but do you think we're kind of getting more towards alignment with what athletes who are excelling in college football should be able to do to capitalize on their stardom while they're in school? I, you know, I'm still waiting on that check. We can send it <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll take a late check. Um, no, I, I think it's important, you know, and, and for years now, you know, for decades, the, the scholarships and the full ride has been the compensation. And I, I don't, I don't want to at all take anything away from a college education um, and having all of that taken care of, because I, I can tell you now, as somebody who was on a full ride, it took so much weight off of my shoulders, off of my mom's shoulders, off of our family, just in general, to not have to be concerned with these type of financial obligations. Um, but, and, and even with that compared to like my wife, for instance, who was on a 75% scholarship all the way mm. to a normal, you know, a normal student who's paying the, the full, the full load. That's tough. But at the same time, it, it is business. And, and when there's so much revenue, um, you know, being accumulated, I think it's important that you take care of these young athletes because a lot of them do come from nothing. You know, I, I, I have this, this great legacy and I come from this wrestling family, but you know, we weren't, you know, um, I wouldn't consider us well off by any means. We were still in a place of struggle throughout my childhood, all the way through high school. Um, you know, so I think there's, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of sacrifice. There's a lot of time, um, and and you know, critical younger years of these young men that are being put forth to boost these programs, to bring that spotlight to these big schools and these big conferences. And I do think they should be taken care of. And oftentimes, as you know, even the, the people who are great in college don't always make it to, to lengthy NFL careers or lengthy pro careers. So, you know, in some ways, it's a, it's a strike while you can, while you have the stardom, um, because it's not guaranteed to, to exist in, in the future there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you hit it right on the head. And, and that's the, that's the, you know, we've always said it, football, you know, within within our, you know, film meetings and everything, and especially as a defense, it's a violent sport, you know, and, and anything can happen at any time. And you never know which play could be your last play. And, and you can be on top of the world. You can be the number one, you know, the number one draft pick. And then, boom, the knee goes out, you know, Achilles burst. It, it can be a freak accident. It, could, it can be the wear and tear of all the mileage put into, into training. You never know, so you do have to kind of capitalize when, you know, when you have that opportunity, and and we have to take care of these young athletes because they bring so much to the table for you know, for for the sports that we love and the entertainment that you know for, that's provided. One thing that I've been kind of fascinated by, even though the NFL is the biggest, you know, one of the biggest commercial sports properties in the world, I feel like its stars very often kind of struggle to get crossover appeal 
to a degree. There, there's Tom Brady and a few others, but even a lot of the really, really elite NFL players don't have movie deals. They're not doing a bunch of other stuff outside of football. I'm curious if you think about, you know, the, the time you spent playing football versus, you know, what you're doing now through WWE, if you feel like WWE has maybe opened doors to let you pursue a lot of other things in addition to just the athletic stuff that, that maybe wouldn't have been available if you had continued in the, in the pro football route. Yeah, well, I, you know, and I think football is the ultimate team sport because of this reason. You know, not everybody's going to be, you know, the top guy like a quarterback, like a Tom Brady, a, a Peyton Manning, um, you know, uh, um, a Patrick Mahomes, you know, for, for the younger guys. And, you know, one thing I've always said about football that's uh, – it's debatable, I guess, and we can go down many different avenues of the whys and why nots. But one thing I've noticed um, is we wore a helmet. We, those guys wear helmets. Their, their faces are covered. And, and that's a huge thing with, you know, the marketability and, and being able to be recognizable is you don't get to see these guys' faces constantly. And that's something WWE, I mean, if, if you ever go to one of our shows, if, uh, you, you'll see right away. We we're not lacking in cameras, and we have an awesome production team. Um, a lot of experience on how to make everything bigger, um, you know, bigger than life. You know, so to make everything have that superstar, that superhero feel, and that's a huge part of it is getting your face on the tube, getting your face out there. And I think that's something that's missed. And watch, you know, there'll be a handful of NFL guys that see this and they're going to be ripping their helmet off anytime they can. You know, Monday Night Football, I'm getting my helmet off so the world can see my face. But I do think that's a, a big a big portion of it is putting these guys and exposing these guys. Um, and then also, you know, I, that's that's one thing. I went from being a defense lineman in football to being a quarterback in the, in the WWE. So I do think there is that hierarchy of, you know, who's going to get the deals, who's going to get the demand, um, who the people want to see. And, and obviously the quarterback is, is that guy. Going back to the, the mask comment that we've had wrestlers that, that you know, existed masks their entire lives. Is that something you thought about when you thought about what your kind of in ring persona, what you think about what you might wear is, is just the, the ability to get the, the Roman Reigns brand out there and make it clear and obvious who you are. If I ever thought about wearing a mask or just in general, you know, it, it, was it in, was it intentional? Yeah, that, that you know, I'm not going to wear a mask because I know that it's important oh. for me to, to have, you know, a brand that is recognizable to do all the other things that I want to do. Sure. Um, you know, and I think there's there's some traditions within the wrestling culture that come along with the mask wearing. Sure. You know, obviously, um, you know, our, our, our luchadors within Lucha Libre and, and the you know, the, the, the Mexican influence um, with, with that, that style of professional wrestling all the way to our, you know, our mythical, you know, characters like a, not necessarily an undertaker, but a cane, um, you know, and, and, and different, even, you know, superhero characters, you know, like my brother and, and the hurricane back in the day. So um, I, for me, it was just about presenting myself and making myself that superstar, not necessarily the character, but finding that character within to be able to display that charisma and that personality that I wanted. And as far as like um, my outfit and stuff like that, it, it was a bit of a, uh, you know, kind of on the on the job process, um, you know, fleshing it out in, in real time. Um, you know, I was putting a and arguably the best faction of all time, the Shield, when we first came in. And we just were wearing the SWAT outfit, um, get up. And then, you know, from there, when we broke up, we just altered it slightly here and there with different vests and stuff. And then, um, you know, as I've gone on to this this new iteration of, of uh, the uh, the character that I'm, that I'm within now, um, we just made the simple, you know, um, adjustment of taking the best off but for me the big thing was is the aesthetics of the body um, and you know and and the look and that goes along with your health and your fitness routine your nutrition um, and everything that comes with you know with uh, you know when you go down that lane 
That's interesting. So you think of your body as part of the costume to a degree. I mean, it makes total sense to me. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, when it comes down to it, we're portraying, we're, we're built as superstars, WWE superstars. Um, and with our audience, you know, being a younger um, demographic, uh, you know, at times, um, it's very influenceable. And, you know, these, these children can believe that you're a superhero. So it, it's, it's very important that you reflect that. It's very important that uh, you put that work in to be able to keep that continuity of, of what you're being built as. And, and that's something that every single day we got to work on. It's, it's, a, it's definitely a fitness journey. I've heard you say that you want to do the, the top dog thing a little differently than a lot of the, the wrestlers that came before you. I'm curious if you can kind of expand on, on what that means, kind of being the face of WWE in, in a different way than a lot of kind of the, the legends that were, were before you. Well, yeah, it taps right into that superhero feel. That super, that bigger than, you know, um, you know, that is this really real type character, these, you know, gigantic superstars, very flamboyant, um, uh, you know, just eye popping guys who are just seem to be bulletproof, these these Superman um, esque characters. And for me, being, you know, the day and age we're in the very reality based social media based uh, generations that we're tapping into. I thought it would be cool to be able to showcase the burden of being the face of a billion dollar company, uh, the stresses, the emotions, um, the pressures that come along with, with this type of responsibility. And I just, I, I feel like people can connect to that. It's, it's very hard and you hear it all the time when, when someone says, my favorite superhero is Superman. And they're like, eh, I like Batman because he's a real guy. He, he's a billionaire and he can buy all these things to make himself, but they enjoy people that they can relate to. And I think, you know, the, the character that we've displayed over the past year it's very relatable. Whether whether you're the face of a billion dollar company, I, I don't know, but you understand the pressures of trying to be the very best or wanting to be that and that competitive nature that pushes you to, to try to get yourself there. And, and that's what we've tried to do. I would imagine one of the things, part of that relatability, the, the public battle you had with leukemia, you took some time away from WWE, came back to it. I'm curious how that changed your perspective after that and, and, and going through all that, did you come back and look at your role, look at your character any differently than you did before? I, I think what that did was it definitely allowed me to kind of just introduce everybody to Joe, you know, the, the man behind the WWE professional wrestler, sports entertainer guy, you know, the character. Um, and then when I came back, there there is about you know a year or so, maybe a year and a half of uh, floating is not a good you know term, but for me and where I felt like I was in my career, I, I was just drifting along a bit, trying to figure out exactly what my purpose was, you know, and and within that we were really starting to dive into you know partnerships and and charity and finding a true fulfillment other than entertaining and creating escapism, really trying to help people um, and, and create awareness. Um, so you, you take that portion of time and then the time that I took uh, my leave, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic while we were figuring everything out, uh, it, it just allowed me to kind of influence my own mindset on what am I trying to to depict here? Do we want to give something that's been done before and it's just kind of a new, a different layer? It's a different look. It's, it's that same Superman character, just with a different looking guy. This time he's got a tan and a tattoo and long hair. Or do we really want to tap into the nuances and, and the, the fine details of what this life is really like and why the character is the way he is and the decisions that he makes. He's not a, like, and I said this a long time ago, I'm, you know, I don't, I'm not a good guy. I'm not a bad guy. I, I just want to be the guy. I want to be the one, you know, the, the one guy who stands above everybody else, the very best at this, at this job, at this gig, at this uh, art form. Um, so that's why I, I really enjoy 
you know, the, this personality and being able to tap into it and, and, you know, put it on screen because people can really connect to it or they can't, but they have, if they can't, they have an opinion on it because they can see, oh, I see that side of it, but I don't agree with him. So I don't like this decision that he's made or, or vice versa. I completely understand what he's going through. And, you know, that's cool that he's, be, he's able to try to flesh it out for us. And, and I connect to that completely. And this has become also a, a philanthropic effort of yours you know, for, the, for a while now, right? You're, you're doing stuff with the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. You're doing stuff with Connor's Cure. Um, how, how much is that? Uh, is that a Roman thing? Is that a Joe thing? You, know, you made a distinction a little while ago about between those two things. How do you think about the balance there? Well, I think when we when we, we go down that lane, it's it's both. You know what I mean? It, it's it, that's above all of this character work and what we do on screen. And, and that's the magic and the most impactful part of being a WWE superstar is the, the influence and the connection that you build with our fan base. And, and, and that's what it's all about is to be able to have the power to affect somebody and, and hopefully a positive way, you know, and on screen, we can, you know, we can antagonize and, and try to, pull out of all kinds, you know, the, the whole realm of emotions. But when it comes to LLS, when it comes to Connor's Cure, we're, we're strictly trying to help people uh, supply positivity, um, create hope and inspiration, and then obviously further awareness, um, financial assistance if we can, and then also really put as much, re you know, as many resources into research and development uh, for these medications as possible. Um, because, you know, as we talked about earlier, our, a huge part of our audience are children. And, you know, if we can continue to help not only make these children happy, but, you know, supply a, uh, an easier path um, for their future and some of these hardships that they're going through, some of these struggles that they're going through, um, you know, I, I find far more fulfillment um, and purpose in that than, you know, being the head of the table or the tribal chief or the big dog, whatever you want to call me. I, it's way cooler doing that work um, than, than, than it is with what we do within the ring. And I must say, being in that ring is really cool. So it, it just, I mean, there's no comparison. I also wanted to ask you about uh, your acting. You were in Hobbs and Shaw, the the Fast and Furious spinoff a couple of years ago. Is that something that you want to get more into? How did that gig come along? And, and, and what is the, what do you think the future is there for you if, if you think it is? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely, you know, I, you have to, you have to be smart about it. We all want to believe that, you know, as I'm not portraying the Superman um, character, Sometimes as men, we have to remind ourselves that you're not Superman. You can't do this forever. Uh, you can't fall down for the rest of your life. There's going to come a point where you just don't move as quick. You're not as strong as you used to be, and you don't recover nearly as fast as you used to. Um, and I would like to save, you know, a few miles on, on that, you know, um, uh, on, on that uh, calculator there. And uh, if I can, you know, continue to entertain and be a part of the creative process and, and be able to dive into different characters and, and build, you know, be a part of a production that, you know, um, creates that escapism within the big screen, then I would love it or a TV show or something like that. It would be phenomenal. But for me to think that I can do this forever, the, the very best, even, you know, The Undertaker, in my opinion, the greatest superstar of all, the greatest WWE superstar of all time. Nobody's done it longer at the, at, at the elite level that he's done it. So much respect for him, but even time caught up to him. So we all have to be smart and we have to remember that, you know, these performances aren't everything in life. They're a big part of our lives and they're, there's, you know, they're vehicles that drive us and create motivation and, and, you know, satisfaction, you know, to a certain degree, but, there, there's more to life and, and being a father of five, being a husband, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things that I want to do that aren't going to involve a wrestling ring. So if I can find a way to continue to tap into these skills that I've learned here in WWE and utilize them and continue to push my career even higher or, or even just stay the same where I'm at and just still can be in, being involved in really good projects. I'm, I'm totally down for that. Are there former superstars you look at that, 
oh, he or she did that really well. They, they took these skills, they went to a different realm, they're really succeeding. I can maybe think of one who's a, who's a relative of yours who's, who's quite famous right now. But are there, yeah, who, who do you look at as uh, that person did this the right way? And, and that might be a model that I want to follow. I, I mean, I think we're in a unique time right now, you know, and, and where it's not just one anymore. Yeah, for, a, for a long time, you know, it, it, the Hulkster was kind of that transcending character that you'd see in, you know, different different formats of entertainment and stuff like that and, and popping up on the big screen. And, and obviously, Dwayne has done it for a, a, a good bit now, and he's dominated the box office for a long time. Um, but to also have a Dave Bautista, um, to, to have a John Cena, Edge, you know, Adam Copeland has done some really cool things. Uh, I mean, he was a part of Vikings, which is one of, was one of my favorite shows to watch. Um, you know, just really good stories, interesting stuff. Um, all the way to, you know, Stone Cold is still doing his thing heavily in podcasting, television. So I think right now we've we've been able to showcase so many, so many talents that are so much more than, you know, professional wrestlers and sports entertainers there there's so many different uh the skill set is a lot wider um you know and uh, and 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 deeper in that regard to to where these guys you know it doesn't phase them they can move on to the next thing they can they can showcase you know the same talents but in a different light um so i think we're in a very special time and we're we're represented very well we only have about a minute left but i want to make sure i ask you because i know there's been talk about it um you and Dwayne meeting up in the ring at some point is that a, a potential reality do you do you want that to happen are you pushing for that to happen where, where does that stand right now for me when it comes to, i mean in ring I, I want the very best matchups i want the biggest moments clearly he's the biggest uh you know he, he's the biggest movie star in the world um, and with that comes a lot of responsibility, insurances, studio demand. I mean, there, we, I'm sure he can give you a better rundown. Um, but, you know, for me, I'm in this ring every, I'm, you know, I, I'm doing this every single week. I'm hitting on all cylinders right now. I, I think if, if he's still willing to do it, maybe you should check out SummerSlam. See what I do to John Cena and see if it's really worth leaving a movie set because these guys have a good gig, you know, and, and to come in and compete with me right now. Uh, it, some people would say I'm the problem, but it's their problem that they got to deal with. So I, I would love to have that matchup. I think uh, our fans would love it, but it's really about if, if The Rock wants it, which we'll see. In 10 years, the, the future WWE superstar is going to be saying that about you. If Roman wants to come down off the movie set and uh, step back into the ring, uh, he, he can do that on his own accord. Roman, this was great. I really appreciate you, uh, you spending the time with us. Uh, I feel like we could have done this for a lot longer. Uh -huh.